Hi everyone, I am sitting here with Bobby Yeager. She runs the CLO ministry here at Prince of Peace, and I guess the very first question that I will ask Bobby is, what is CLO? CLO stands for Children's Liturgy of the Word. And we started the program basing it on the needs of four-year-olds, five-year-olds, and those in kindergarten, so it could include six-year-olds a way to present the gospel to them in words that make more sense to them. So this weekend's gospel was on the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes in the gospel sounded similar to what we read to them, but we didn't say, uh, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. We would change the wording to be more appropriate for their age group, and we shortened them considerably. So. That's, and then, then there's a discussion about the point of what we really emphasize over and over again for kids at that age is that God is love and God is merciful. And what do we want to do? We want to please God and listen to him by sharing, by being kind, and by loving, loving him and others. Those are the points we go over and over again in every lesson because that's what the gospel is about, right. love. So just basic tenets that kids will understand, you know, taken outside of the normal context and, you know, makes it simpler for younger folks. Yes, and we try to bring it down to what they can do at their level. So we, we try to apply it to interacting with family members, with friends at school, when there is school, uh, and, and how we can relate to each other. And, thinking about the poor and thinking about those who are less fortunate and making them aware of people bringing food for the help for the homeless or you know donating to that program or bringing the food for the food pantry or any of the ministries that are going on in the church making them aware of that and how those are opportunities for us to show love and to take care of others well that's great i mean obviously we need to start young they need to understand these things, and right. you know, this is a great way to present it to them on terms that they understand. So tell me, how did you get involved with CLO, Bobby? Oh, a hundred years ago, <laughs> um, my dad, when my dad was alive, we were coming to Mass, and I had not become very active in ministry. Children's Liturgy gave me the opportunity to serve while I was here at Mass with him. So I was... That's how I got involved, through the gal who ran it at that time. And then when she moved, it, she asked me to help coordinate. So now, and not only am I participating as a, as a um, presenter, but I also try to make up the schedule and um, contact everyone when it's their turn to volunteer as a presenter or as an assistant because we follow the two adults in the classroom at all times. We follow the rules of the diocese for the, for the program. Sure. Well, we always want to maintain the safety of the kids. Now, Absolutely. I know, you know, I know that during COVID things have been different. I'm going to get you to explain that to us in a second. But I realized, you know, um, when I, as a mass coordinator, you know, I have to use the walkie-talkie and let you know when to bring the kids <laughs> yes. back in. So you bring the kids out when during the mass? before the first reading. So that we are here for the opening prayer, the children are here for the confidior, and then before the first reading happens, we bring the children, Father calls them to the front when, when this is possible, and then we go down to the cloak classroom in room two, and um, we teach them the sign of the cross, we do not teach them any of the formal prayers, but we do um, them. We introduce that God is merciful and we sing songs with them about the sorry song. We do the gospel. We do a discussion. We do an activity sheet. And then we do prayers of the faithful for them and ask them what they, who they would like to pray for and um, or special needs that they have in their hearts. Well, that's sweet. And, I didn't realize y'all did that. Yeah, and then we return. The core, mass coordinator lets us know when the homily is over, and we try to um, 
get the children back after the prayers of the faithful here in the sanctuary and then it's easier for us to monitor that they they found where they're supposed to go back to. Right. Yeah, it's always cute to see them scampering back in <laughs> looking for their families. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so during COVID, what are you doing to, to deal with club? We are doing a taped lesson. Okay. So that, that can be accessed through the website under the Christian Formation tab under Children's Liturgy of the Word Club. And uh, so we it's very abbreviated. Uh, just a reading of the gospel. I just talk about the points that the Lord was trying to make from, from uh, resources that I have available to me. This is totally not on, off the cuff. Right. This is from, from resources that I have available sure. online and, and resources that uh, come through the office, through the diocese. Okay. So that's available to them now. And hopefully we'll be back doing the regular thing once we can get all get back into groups. And we hope, we hope so much for that in the yes. very near future. So let's say somebody wants to get involved and help with CLO. What would they need to do? Is there training? Is there anything that has to go on? Or Any of the adults who work with children have to go through Virtus training. Okay. And then that has to continue. Each month you have to update your Virtus training, which just means you go onto a website and read the excerpt that they have about keeping children safe and answer the questions and then you keep current in your in your training for Virtus so that the diocese is sure that we are being safe right that the um, Father Romy here at the parish is sure that we're being safe and the parents can be sure we are trained in safety and we will follow those guidelines Okay. And as a matter of fact, one of the issues that had come up was that when children need to use the restroom during the lesson, we are in a pickle because we cannot have one adult leave the classroom to care for that need with the child. Right. That's not safe for the child who's leaving. That's not safe for the children who are left. So we had to make adjustments and um, tell the families that we really can't offer that service. Right. So we just need more volunteers. We do, We yeah. need volunteers. When we reopen, we need volunteers. We need um, adults. And we also have teenagers who help out as assistants with putting out the crayons and just helping to herd the, sure. the group. Right. And uh, so we're open for uh, teenage assistance. We're open for adult assistance. And we're open for adult presenters who will read the gospel and read the lesson plan. It's all there in, in, uh, in the book, and it's nothing that you have to know Bible history about right. or anything. It's right there for you. Well, that's what I was thinking. You know, this is nothing to be afraid of. If you want to help, it's nothing that you have to, you know, stay up late nights worrying about, right? right? And you just come in and you, you, you do this ministry. And you, and yes, for the love of children, for a way to serve God, what a wonderful opportunity it is to be with them. You know, one of the hard things about doing the taping is that I don't have kids to talk to, right. to respond to me. And, you know, that it's different. Sure. Different. You know, we're all, you know, learning to adapt and we're, some of us are resisting it more than others, but, you know, we're just <laughs> doing the best we can, right? That's right. And we appreciate everything you do for this oh, ministry. Thank you. you seem to be a natural at it. And I just want to let you know how much I appreciate the oh, fact that you. you do that. Many years of teaching behind this in the public school system, and, and, uh, and I love it. Great. Well, thanks, Bobby, for sharing a few minutes thank with you, me. Thank you, Alan.